Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the StarCraft Nation. Zoy here from the StarCraft Squad, and today uh, I think we're having our most exciting interview yet. Better than In Control, better than Root QXE. We have Robert Clotworthy, who's the voice of Marshal Jim Raider. Freaking Marshal Jim Raider from StarCraft, StarCraft Brood War, and then StarCraft 2. How are you today? Good. Remember, you don't mess with a bourbon cowboy. <laughs> right on. So, um,. Uh, <laughs> I had a bunch of viewers submit questions, so we're going to start oh, cool. with those cool. right off the bat. Uh, first thing is, you know, a fan or fairly standard question for someone in your position. How did you get started into voice acting? Uh, well, my father was a uh, producer of radio commercials, and when I was just a little kid, I used to go to recording sessions with him, and I was around incredibly talented people, and some of which who were doing the cartoons that I was growing up with, um, and I was just enamored with what they were doing. They seemed to be having a great time. I think I always had kind of a creative bug in me anyway. So I really pushed my father hard to let me do that. And finally at 15, I think I wore him down and he allowed me to go out and meet with some casting people who then turned me on to a, uh, 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 agent here in, in Los Angeles who specialized in handling a lot of young people. And I went to his workshop did some improvisations. He said, hey, you know, I'd like to handle you. And I said, okay. Sent me out, and I got the first job I ever went out on, got the third job I ever went out on. So I was pretty much working right away uh, on camera. And then it was kind of a natural segue since my father, his real connections and his real knowledge was in the voiceover game, that I was introduced to all these great voiceover agents, and they started sending me out. And it's kind of like uh, like dumb luck. I didn't have a, a real plan. I just knew that I, I wanted to do it, and I was fairly successful right away. And now all these years, I look back and think, damn. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I've, I've worked a bit. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm having more fun now than I did when I was 15 years old. And at 15, like I tell people, I, I was just like partying hard, right? And now it's so it's so much more fun. I think I appreciate it more, and especially with StarCraft, it's just such a such a joy and a thrill to be able to portray Jim Rayner and uh, to talk to the fans. I love doing these interviews because I love to communicate with everybody that's out there. I'm a I'm as big a fan of the game and as big a nerd as everybody else. Uh, if I wasn't in it, I'd be playing it. And um, fortunately, I get to uh, to play Rayner, and that's that's a pretty cool gig. Yeah, definitely. Now, this, this is a perfect segue into another viewer question. Uh, people want to know, do you play StarCraft II? Did you play Brood War? And, you know, were you any good at it? You know, the first one that uh, that came out, I guess it was 98, so it was 12, 13 years ago. Yes, yes. And at the time, it was, you know, I was an actor, and it was just, it was just a job. I went down and auditioned because I had a friend who was working over at Blizzard at the time who introduced me to Chris Metzen. And he liked what I was doing. We played around with with the character a little bit, worked on it. You know, I can't imagine more than two or three sessions. And after that, I essentially forgot about it. It was just a job that I did. And it was only many years later that I started to realize that this game was as popular as it was. Well, in the meantime, Chris and the gang over at Blizzard had sent me a copy of, of the game so I could play. But I'm one of those people that's pretty impatient when it comes to computers. I go to DEF CON 11 in about 30 seconds if things <laughs> aren't, aren't working right. And I, I got incredibly frustrated because you know I wasn't able to get through the game. And fortunately, Chris and the people over there gave me all the cheat codes <laughs> <laughs> for the game. So I was able to give myself unlimited uh, power and, you know, no way anybody could kill me, and I was able to get get through the game. Um, it's a pretty complicated game, man. Oh it's, yeah, it's not like uh, like an Xbox where you're just sitting there with a toggle switch and flipping a couple of, of buttons. You really have to to think. So I can't say that I'm a, a great player at StarCraft. They've sent me the the new version. I haven't had an opportunity to to install it into my computer and really play it uh, at this point. My fear is that if I started playing it, I'd never stop. Right. You know, it would be all of a sudden six months would go by and I'd have a beard down to my knees and look around thinking, what happened? Why did they foreclose on my house? Why did my wife leave me? 
<laughs> I have to blame it on on Chris and StarCraft. Okay, so um, I remember reading someplace because you know I was doing research on you. I thought uh -huh. you were, you know one of my favorite you know characters of all time is Jim Rayner, and I remember reading someplace that when StarCraft Two was announced that you you know kind of fought to get your spot back as Jim Rayner. I don't think it would have been the same for you know fans like myself who love the single player to you know not have the same voice. So um, you know, did you actually you know fight pretty hard to get that spot back? And you know, what did you have to do to get you know back in position as Jim Rayner? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, and and I've spoken to to Chris Metzen about this and I first of all want to thank him and Blizzard for entrusting me with with uh, being the voice of Rainer because it is a big deal and when we did it so many years ago nobody could anticipate how popular and how big the game was going to be and I think what happened at least this is what Chris tells me is that Blizzard really wants to get the game right their focus is not on just making a buck off of StarCraft. They want to put out a product that is really top-notch, something they can all be proud of. And that's why there is no release date, or the, the release date that they have is very fluid, because as things change, as they perfect it, as they rewrite things, that delays when the game is going to be released. And... You know, I found out, I guess, oh my goodness, I guess it was about maybe a year and a half before I went in to start doing recording on this latest, latest version that they were casting for the role of Jim Rayner. So, of course, the first thing I did was call up my agents and say, oh, you know, by the way, uh, I did that originally. And the agents called over and basically, you know, I was politely told, well, thank you very much, but that was 10 years ago. We've We've moved on. We are, are interested in somebody else doing the the voice, somebody else that we've we've fallen in love with. And but then the game went out to auditions for everybody. I mean, it was basically just sent out sent out in mass to all the different agents around the country. So people were submitting all their clients, and my agent said, "Listen, you know, you're you should come in and, and audition for this." So I auditioned for it, and I sent it in, didn't really hear anything. And then I started getting some feedback from some of the fans online asking me what was going on. And I, you know, I was pretty honest. I said, well, you know, at this point in time, uh, it doesn't look good. I don't, I don't think they're, they're going to be bringing, bringing me back. I've auditioned, but you know, they essentially told me, thank you very much, but we're, we're moving on. Well, that I guess started a little bit of a groundswell within the uh, the online community. They even started uh, putting together a petition to get me back and also Glennis Talkin back, who played uh, Kerrigan in the original game. And the, uh, you know, what they call it breakdowns when it goes out. The sides go out for the different characters. And they did a second round of casting on Rainer. They essentially said, you know, we haven't found anybody that we like yet. So... Please submit some more people, but don't resubmit anybody that you've already submitted. Well, my agent, Rebecca Dodd over at SBV, who I will eternally be grateful to, said, you know, I'm going to have you read for this again. I said, okay. So I, uh, we sent that in. And finally, I got a call from, from Blizzard that said, we'd like to bring you in for a callback. Now, callback is a good thing. That means that you're you're seriously being considered. So I, I went down to the recording studio here in Los Angeles. Chris Metzen was there. A bunch of the uh, other people from Blizzard were there. Andre Romano, who is the director of the game, was there. And we worked essentially for about half hour, 45 minutes on me just doing some, some scenes as Rainer. And uh, at that point in time, I felt, well, you know, I was given my shot. I went in there, did my thing, and... We're, we're going to leave it up to the universe to decide whether this part is mine or not. But I certainly can't say I didn't get a fair shake and, and a good opportunity. Well, three or four weeks later, I get the call and they say, yeah, you, you're Rainer. And when I talked to Chris about, about it, he said, you know, Robert, when we, when we were putting together the game, uh, we really had to look at all the possibilities. It was just a natural kind of a thing that we, we needed to do. We had a much bigger budget. We could have gotten anybody that we wanted to be the, uh, the character. So we thought, let's 
see what's out there, just to see what's out there. And he said, when Robert, when you walked back into the room and you, and you did Rainer, we all looked at each other and said, Rainer's here. And as an actor, that's the most gratifying thing that you want to hear is that you got the job fairly and squarely. It wasn't because anybody was pulling strings. I went in there, auditioned, and they felt that I was the, uh, the best person for the role. And so that, in a, in a nutshell, is the story. So I had to really keep auditioning, keep fighting, um, and never give up. Kind of like what uh, – that, that struggle was a bit like Rainer's struggle. Right. He, he just – he's relentless. He never stops. And, uh, and that was one of the things I admire about him. So I'm, thr I'm thrilled, obviously, to, uh, to be playing this guy. Oh, yeah. I would love that, too. So the third most action question, you know, on uh -huh. YouTube, we have them vote up the comments and stuff to see which one they want most. Third one is actually a little bit of, you know, you know quoting Jim Rayner. So uh -huh. um, one of the most voted up quotes was actually a pretty awesome line. It's Jim Rayner saying um, he's talking to General Duke. General Duke's, you know, Jim Rayner shows up to save him. Dukes, uh -huh. you know, you're about the last folks I expected to show up. What's your angle here, Manx? And Jim Rayner, well, I'll type the line to you in <laughs> Skype, and um, my viewers would like you to uh, say it to us. Okay. And it's this one right here. It's actually uh, one of my favorite lines as well. Let's see. Well, I'm not, I'm not seeing it on my, my Skype screen. Hmm. Oh, darn it. Click the chat button and scroll down, and it might be at the bottom. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. See, I'm kind of clueless when it comes to Skype or chat. So where's the, the chat button? I don't know. I'm looking, looking, looking. I'll just email it to you, and we'll get back to this question in a <laughs> there moment. There you go. That, Perfect. That'll save everything. Perfect, man. All That's right. a good thing. There we go. All right, so we're going to skip that question for now. So a lot of people, you know, you see them being voice actors as well as actor, and um, IMDB shows you, you know, you act quite a bit, um, you know, which one do you prefer to do, and you know how you know how do you like you know acting it compared to you know voice acting? Um, I would say, well, first of all, uh, I am an actor, and the areas that I get an opportunity to act in are varied. Sometimes it's on camera in a TV show or in a film. Sometimes it's maybe on a on a stage or in a video game, but. In all those different areas, you're still acting. So the, the process is very similar. You just have to adjust your technique to, uh, to accommodate the different medium that you're working with. One of the wonderful things about voiceover is that you're not limited by what you look like at all. I mean, come on. I look nothing like Jim Rayner. Right. Even on my best or worst day, I would never look like this guy. Um, but I sound like him and I certainly have elements of my personality, I think that work well with where he's coming from. So I'm, it's, it's somewhat easy for me to kind of tune into who he is and understand what he's all about. So that opportunity is fantastic because the sky's the limit. I've played good guys. I've played bad guys. Um, yeah, I've played animated weird characters that aren't even human. Um, so that's a great place to go as an actor because the sky's the limit. You're also limited in how, uh, you know, since you're limited by only your voice, you really have to work hard on your technique to convey all the different subtleties of emotion that you may have as a character. I can't get away with just kind of looking at somebody mean and having that come through a microphone. I have to somehow... Uh, create that tonality within the, uh, the characterization that, I, that I'm working on so that people understand that this guy's kind of pissed off. Now, on the other side, with when you're working on camera, one of the great opportunities working on camera is that you get to work with other actors. In, in the voiceover game, you're generally working by yourself. You're working in a vacuum. So it's a little bit more challenging to do a scene because you don't really have anybody else to play off of. And if you're playing off of, of what somebody else has already recorded, their performance is pretty locked in. So not, they're not going to really be able to adjust to what I'm doing. And in a TV show or a film, you get a great opportunity to work on